Now, everyone, it was the last chance for teams in the C event at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Let's go to day three highlights from the 9 a.m. draw at the Lethbridge Curling Club. The Lethbridge rink of Casey Scheidegger trying to stay alive. Final stone in the first end. An easy takeout leaves her lying two. And that forced Taryn Hamilton from Calgary to try the hit and stick. And she did just that to take a single point. And it's one nothing Hamilton after one end of play. To the second end, Scheidegger lying to Hamilton's final stone. It will slip through the guards quite nicely and it'll leave Hamilton lying one, but it also set up a nice scoring chance for Scheidegger. She managed to get by her guards. It curls wide of the redstone inside the rings. Not a great angle, but Scheidegger will score two on the play, giving her a two to one lead. Fourth end, Scheidegger's final stone. She works the hit and stick. That'll leave her lying three, which is a great result, but it's Hamilton, of course, with the hammer. She will hit and uh, hit, uh, make the takeout, that is. And uh, right on the button, a little flip inside, a beautiful shot to tie the game up at two. This one went right down to the wire. Hamilton scored one in the tenth to win it 5-4. That ends Scheidegger's run at the Scotties, unfortunately, for her action continues all weekend at the Lethbridge Curling Club. Lethbridge Hurricanes have had four days off to prepare for what is sure to be an intense battle at the NMAX Center tonight. The Canes welcome the Calgary Hitman to town. Calgary leads the series, season series two games to one. Ty Rimmer expected to get the start in goal. Reed Duke is also expected to return to the lineup after missing one game with an upper body injury. I will have highlights for you tonight on our late show. Also this evening, Kootenays and Moose Jaw and the Tigers begin a U.S. Division road trip in Tri-City, Washington. Calgary Flames head coach Bob Hartley confirmed today both Roman Cherbenka and Yuri Hoodler will be in the lineup tomorrow night against the Edmonton Oilers. They'll play on a line with Matt Stajan. And it looks like Stajan will remain at the center position. And of course, when two players are inserted into the lineup, others have to come out of the lineup. And it appears rookie Sven Berchi could be one of those sitting in the press box. That's a bit of a disappointment. You know, everyone... You know, has to fight for, for his ice time and whether it's Jerome Ginla, whether it's Alex Nagy, whether it's Sven Barchi, you know, like we're in this business. This is the NHL and only one thing matters is to win hockey games. So we will make the decision like tomorrow and it's going to be for the best of the hockey club. You know what, I felt like uh, maybe I was a guy playing overseas during a lockout today <laughs> practice, but uh, you know, that's, that's great. You know, they, they, they know each other and, and you know, familiarity uh, on the line is always a great thing, um, and I'll try and uh, come in and, and, and play my game and, you know, try and fit right in. Flames and Oilers in the first round of the Battle of Alberta tomorrow, 8 o'clock at the Scotiabank Saddle Dome. And those very same Oilers were in action last night hosting the defending Stanley Cup champion L.A. Kings. The first period jam full of power play opportunities for both teams. Matt Scramble here in front of the Kings net. The ref lost sight of the puck even though it was clearly loose. And rookie Nal Yakupov put the puck in the net, but the whistle had been blown. So, of course, no goal. Still scoreless in the second period. Look at this rush by the Oilers. Yakupov with a little deke and Jonathan Quick robbed him with the glove hand. The game's first goal is scored here as Jeff Carter in alone on Devin Dubnik, and he will roof a backhand right under the crossbar. 1-0 L.A. after 40 minutes. Oilers pressing for the tying goal late in the third. Sam Gagne got tied up with Quick, and that allowed Ryan Nugent Hopkins to score into the empty net and make it 1-1. But for some strange reason, the goal was waved off after the fact. Just bizarre last night in Edmonton with the officiating, but the Oilers' resiliency pays off as they get the tying goal with five seconds on the clock. Yakupov swatted in his second of the season. Is he excited or what? One won the score now. Then in overtime, L.A. received a too many men on the ice penalty, and the Oilers capitalized. Sam Gagne with the winner. Two to one, the final score. The Kings, Jackie, are still winless to start the new season. Whoa. Yep. Intense. <laughs> Coming up next, another intense story. Here's what some of the dangers <laughs> of our job are. Oh, dear.